Have you taken on the nightmare that has neglected pivots on your ice house? It's a lot of fun. It's not. It's horrible. So the very first thing you're going to do is break your lug nuts free. Don't loosen them all the way. Don't take them off. Don't do anything like that. Just break them free because obviously the weight of the house will keep the wheel from spinning when you have your four-way and you're trying to take them off. So just break the lugs free and then lower your house to the ground. Once you get the house down, of course, it, it raises your pivot. <clears throat> and since mine were semi-seized, they're not really seized, but they're really, um, real stiff. So what I had to do to get, you know, even with the, the house down, my tires were still on the ground pretty heavily. And since I can't pick them up, like you're supposed to be able to pivot them by hand with their, with their cables loose. I can't do that with mine, which is why I'm doing this job. So what I did is I used my floor jack in a two by four and I'll show you how. So obviously my wheel is off already. I've already started doing this. I, I didn't show removing the tire or anything because I figured pretty much everybody knows how to do that, right? I hope. I took my floor jack here and you know, when the when you drop your house down, this is all pivoted up. So this is all like way up here. It's, you know, I've lowered it down since now, but it, you know, I, I scooted this under here. You know, picture the tire is still here. And I stood the two by four on the pad with this part right under here. This is a steel lip. And I was able to, to pivot this up just a bit more so I could slip the tire off. And then I just lowered the jack and, um, you know, it didn't fall back down like it's supposed to. I had to actually crank it back down. But make sure when you're doing this that you have the house blocked up enough where your, your hub assembly doesn't hit the ground because you won't be able to as this pivots, it exposes what we're doing here. This bolt, and there's a nut back under here for it. If this this whole part is when it's cranked up, it this it's kind of hard to see. I know I'm on the ground here. This whole thing comes around like that, and it covers this nut, so you can't get any. You know what I mean? You can't get a uh, ratchet or anything on there. So you have to have this facing down, at least as far as I can tell. I couldn't think of any other way to do it, and a wrench just wasn't going to cut the mustard. This this is like all rusty and nasty, and it was very difficult. I had to use uh, like, you know, a big old breaker bar. That's an impact socket. I have an impact, but today is the day I learned that my impact is uh, broken. So there's that. So again, what you're doing at this stage, once you have everything all set, is you're taking this bolt out. And there's a, it's a 9 16 and same thing with 9 16 not on the back, back here. I've already taken this apart because trust me, yours is not gonna come apart this easily. You'll have to probably use a punch and a hammer. And I have just like this little cute little baby hammer. You know, when this bolt is still through here, it, it's shouldered so it's not threaded into this housing or this uh, stub at axle at all. So it just goes straight through, there's just a hole. But of course it's rusty and disgusting, so it's all seized up in there. So you'll have to get a punch of some sort, get on the back side of it, and then, you know, pound it out. And once you get it going, you know, it, mine came out fairly well once it uh, got, got going. Okay, so this is where I'm at so far. Um, I didn't video myself struggling with this, <laughs> this far because like it's just a nightmare I have this little gap here and when I started this was like flush you could hardly even see the seam so this is the only thing I could think of I grabbed an old putty knife and I stuck it in like you know the best I could there and I just hammered it just hammered the edge of it until I created a slight little seam all the way around and then once I could easily fit the putty knife in there, then I graduated up to a screwdriver I didn't, I didn't care about because I knew I'd break the tip off, and I did. 
but did the same thing hammer 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 just a little bit you know all the way around it until I got a gap big enough for that and I graduated up to a chisel same thing hammer 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 all the way around until I got a gap and I got up to another chisel it's fatter same thing and I got a cat paw until I could get that in there. Now it's the gap is too big where I can't, there's no leverage. I, it won't pry against the surface anymore. So I'm going to try a gear, gear puller. And I'm going to see if that'll work. I might end up wrecking this too. I don't know. But uh, I guess we'll see. Okay, that back on there. It is working, but it's really slow and I don't think this is gonna work to get it all the way off, but my feels This stuff is great. This uh, JB80 stinks, but it works really well. There it is. I'm going to take some carb cleaner and clean it out so I get a better idea of what I'm looking at here. I'm going to get some emery cloth and clean this up the best I can. Boy, is that rough where that ring was. Wow. I'm going to clean up the axle stub the best I can and hopefully create a, a runway for this thing to come off of. Okay, so day 2.25. I called my brother who brought over a porta power, so that's where we're at right now. Yeah. So what we're doing here is we're wedging a spreader between the uh, frame of the ice house and this assembly until we can get this little mini ram thing in there. We've had that in there, but it, this is the entire throw of this. So <clears throat> we're having to shim it with like little pieces of wooden things. Drop it down. <laughs> oh yeah, I moved a bunch just from that. Good. So we're about a half hour later now, or 20 minutes maybe, and we finally, finally got it off of there. So there's the axle stub. It doesn't look damaged, but there isn't a, a drop of grease on here at all. I just got this ice house. I bought it from the original owner. and. Um, you know, I, <laughs> they obviously never did any maintenance or anything on it. They probably didn't, weren't even aware of it. So day three now, uh, we got the axle assembly off yesterday and now I'm just cleaning up the axle shaft. I'm going to take my Dremel tool with a little cutting wheel on it and I'm going to cut some grooves 
in this axle stub kind of I just figured kind of an X pattern around the front and back almost like a figure eight maybe around it hopefully that will give the uh, the grease you know a path to travel instead of just kind of stopping when it hits that okay, this hole in here is too small these are the, the zerks I'm putting in they're quarter inch um, 28 taper and then the 3564 uh, ball check size I don't really care about that as long as my grease gun fits on there so these are what I'm putting in there and for the quarter 28th size you need to drill a 7 seconds hole a little bit of that This is the quarter 28 tab. Sweet. I'll put a little bit of medium strength Loctite on there to make sure that stays put. I just realized something in my, this, this piece. The pipe that goes over the axle stub on mine, I don't know if they're all like this. I don't know if you can see in there, but it's threaded. Like this part here is smooth. And then all the way back until the back outer lip, again, is smooth. But this whole center part is all threaded. And I wonder if that's how they thought that the grease would make its way around. I don't know. I was under the impression that this pipe was smooth all the way in. But it, it's not on mine. Okay, now on the inside of this piece, um, I've drilled a 7 seconds hole here as well. Tap it out with a quarter 28 tap. And then here's the the new Zerk. This is a little bit of Loctite blue, which is like the medium strength, so you'll be able to get these out again. If you use red, you might as well just throw them in the, the whole thing in the trash. You can't get them out. And I think green might be even worse. So just a little, little dab of blue on there. That's plenty. So this assembly is ready to go back together now. I'm going to put anti-seize all throughout this uh, pipe and then on the shaft as well. Now that I've got it off and you know all greased up properly, I think it'll this job will be much easier next year or in two years whenever I have to do it again. I also got the uh, composite spacers, so I won't have to worry about taking that steel spacer off there again. That sucked. It was awful. So this is Permatex copper anti-seize lubricant. I'm using the copper because the silver stuff seems to dry out. Um, I used it on a lot of different things and when you open something up after a long time that has that in there it seems like it's kind of dry and crumbly. It's just from my own experience so I prefer the copper. And that's what I'm going to use on this. mention this but make sure you put the grease on the shaft as well because that's what got us into the situation to begin with so put a little bit of that on there too so here we are all put together finally there's the Additional Zerk fitting I put in. I've replaced the one, the stock one inside here, you know, on, on this shaft inside there. 
some of my goop squeezed out, so that's probably good. I haven't greased these yet, but I will. This is the composite spacer, and then I, whoops, and then I composite spacer, and then I used the stock, you know, the original washers, just because they're bent a certain way to butt up against this, and I just didn't feel like bending another set of them. I'm just pretty beaten. The washers that I bought are quite a bit thicker than these, so I'm just using the stock ones, but I put a new bolt and new, uh, I used a nylock on the back. And um, now that this moves freely, I'm actually able to pivot it by hand. It's not easy, it weighs a ton, but I can at least pivot it by hand. Sorry about the wind noise, we're under a storm advisory. Um, this is how you would set up your port of power. Well, at least how I did it anyway. It just goes in there. And then I've been alternating between in front of here like this and then this little area behind the axle stub here you can see I've made a little progress there this is the second side I've already done the other side it only took two and a half days but I found if you know if I alternate the uh, the spreader between the front and the back of the the axle shaft it seems to help get the the assembly off of there a little straighter so it doesn't seem to bind quite as much still sucks still takes forever still takes a ton of effort but I think that's pretty much the only way that you can do this